Hello, I'm Killian Quigley, a postdoctoral researcher at the Sydney Environment Institute here at the University of Sydney. To start, I'd like to acknowledge and pay respect to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners and custodians of the land where the University of Sydney stands and where I'm talking to you now. This video is part of a series on lived experiences of interdisciplinary collaboration. Today, I'll be speaking with my colleagues Michelle St. Anne and Megan McKenzie, who have been working across academic and artistic practices about how disagreement can be the sign of effective collaboration, about the importance of creating safe spaces within a collaborative relationship, about how collaborators find one another in the first place, and a great deal more. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in, and we hope you enjoy. Thanks very much. Hello, I'm Michelle St. Anne and I'm the Deputy Director of the Sydney Environment Institute and I have another life as the Artistic Director of the Living Room Theatre here in Sydney. Hi, my name is Megan McKenzie. I'm a Professor of Gender and War here in the Government and International Relations Department uh, in the School of Social and Political Sciences. So Michelle, I'm aware that Megan and your work together comprises one and part of a larger project of yours. One that includes a number of other collaborators as well. Could you give us a little bit of sense of that bigger picture and a little bit of information about why you chose to invite Megan to contribute? Yeah, sure. So about 20 years of my practice has been all around violence and violence in the home. Um, and during my work at the Environment Institute, where um, it's all about environmental uh, damage, I kind of wove my lens of violence um, into this bigger large scale project, which is a little bit crazy. We're looking at the aesthetics of violence so that we understand how that feels so that we can recognize it when it's in plain sight. Um, and I pulled together a large range of different types of scholars. And I had known about Megan through a research assistant who kept on talking about Megan McKenzie, Megan McKenzie, war. And I was like, she's my lady. And we finally did meet each other and I was intoxicated by her voice um, and the way that she talked about her research and how her research uh, stuck to her. And to me, that gave a really beautiful visceral experience. And I invited her to explore her work in this kind of new remit. So, Megan, how did that invitation land with you? I mean, when Michelle first approached you, what was your sense of what she was inviting you to contribute? Yeah, so I had known about Michelle as well, and I had known about some of the work she was doing at the Sydney Environment Institute. We had sort of this mutual colleague who both of us love and trust and I think because she had been the one that introduced us I think we already had that bit of trust. I was really excited to hear about uh, Michelle's vision and this idea of, of really thinking creatively about violence and sort of having an artistic uh, vision for how to talk about violence and how to represent violence. Um, because certainly I do research on war and obviously violence is a big part of that and p part of what I try and do in my work is also to think about how war feels and how it impacts individuals. What did you actually do together, Michelle? Um, well, I dragged Megan onto the rehearsal floor. I was in studio here at the university at the Rex Cranbourne studio and I was working with my uh, dancers and musicians and we had created a series of images and sounds. And then I invited um, three scholars into the rehearsal. And all I did was ask them to stand, sit on the outside of the work. They had to share one microphone and it was a simple task uh, because I, I knew that they weren't used to hearing their voice in space in a different type of context that would drift over art. Um, I said, just start with, giving me your name and your title and then what do you see in the image? What is the image representing? What is the sound making you feel? Well, they forgot about their names and where they were from and they went straight into the image. Like the image seemed to just sit inside them very quickly. And then what the performers had to do is respond to what they were hearing, what the descriptions um, that that the academics were giving. And it was quite an extraordinary experience, one that's shared. Mm. I, love, I love the idea that 
from the get-go there was a kind <laughs> of creative disobedience on the part of the collaborators refusing to do certain things that you were asking them. Yeah, we? yeah. I mean, it's a very unique environment. I think um, there's other examples where academics try and collaborate with artists, and to be honest, most of the time it's a, it's a big mess because either academics try and do artistic work. No offense. I mean, some some academics are artists, but it's it's sort of like, I mean, even think about all of the setup we had today in this room. So, for example, you have a pro professional setting this room up so that it looks like a, a <laughs> that this video is going to be done well, right? And so, if you have s academics thinking, oh, I can just paint or I can just do a podcast without understanding that actually these are these require skills and and training in some cases and um, and so often it I think it doesn't go well um, and or um, artists sort of taking over you know it's either one I think it's very very seldom like truly collaborative and it felt the way Michelle set this up um, where we were meant to comment on the artists and also the artists were responding it immediately felt like, oh, this isn't actually just about us sort of adding on to the existing piece or them trying to interpret what we're saying, which I think neither of which would have worked exactly. I love what you say about the perils of a collaborative style that seems to be about acquiring or pretending mm -hmm. to acquire somebody else's expertise or somebody else's practice. I'm really interested in how we're talking about collaboration is ideally not only acquisitive or not only additive, but sort of integrative. In other words, a successful collaboration is something that seems to add up to more than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. And I think that sounds really wonderful in theory, but I'm also mindful of the, the ways that that's really challenging, right? So for instance, Michelle, when we start out with a vision for a collaborative project, how do you think we try to hold that vision in our minds and continue working towards that vision while also remaining open mm -hmm. to the ways that a project is, I don't know, maybe inevitably going to have to adapt or change course along the way. Mm. That's, yes, because that's where structure comes in. Okay. For me, that's where structure is. So uh, what are the bones that I want to explore? And then how do my colors and my colors will be my collaborators beyond the human so ha what is light doing what is that object doing what it's what is its relationship they kind of create the flesh over those bones and then I think my final role as the the driver of the project um, is to find what that end skin is that holds everything together. So then when I asked Megan to actually um, join the work, and so we had another creative development called Strung Up, which actually was a, a finished piece of work. Um, it, was, it was scary for everybody because I knew what the bones were. I, the flesh was good because we worked separately and, and we, everyone sort of went, okay, yeah, I'm the arm and I'm the neck and my But then I didn't know what the skin was. And we just, and because I was trying to test out how is this audience going to react to this? How are they going to take to Megan? How are the other collaborators going to take to Megan? And it was just amazing because Megan was so open. Everyone kind of cared for her in a sense of, okay, no, if you're going to make a mistake, don't worry about it. We're here, we're professionals. We can cover that. But I also think it comes from that idea about my vision being very clear. So people could buy into that because I described an aesthetic form as opposed to A, B and a C. You said something towards the end first that maybe we should underline, which is about um, an effective collaborative practice that has space for even roles within the collaboration to change. The idea that the roles that we define for ourselves and for others in the early stages of a collaboration are not necessarily static, right? But also to work with your, your metaphor, if I oh, followed God. it correctly, we had bones, flesh, and skin, right? And the idea that an integral skeleton needs to exist in the early stages, needs to be erected in the early stages, 
in order for the flesh to kind of constitute itself and reconstitute itself over the course of time. And I love the, uh, the addition of skin as a kind of external or outward facing um, layer of the entire process, which uh, in your metaphor, your collaborators were actively weaving. And of course it's gonna be brown skin because it's the skin that I, I walk around in. And so in that, when I'm making work, it has that, it has that sense of hurt and it has that sense of the unheard and the unseen. Um, and I know that's kind of heavy, but in a way that colours my lens as, as any other collaborator, the way what they bring in is what is their lens? What is their sense of being and their place in the world? That is really a wonderful um, way of describing everything that we're talking about. And it's really inspiring. I also want to make sure that we're remaining attentive to um, <laughs> challenging things, right? Mm -hmm. Things that the ways, the ways that collaboration um, always involves, right? Difficulty and dissonance and so on. So Megan, in the, in the context of your work with Michelle or more generally, could you talk a little bit about the importance of dissent and disagreement in collaborative process? Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I think of collaboration as a conversation and I, I mean, I think if you don't have dissent, it's because one person's just dominating. Okay. It would sort of be like a conversation where everyone agrees and there's nothing happening. Well, that's probably only happening because one person is dominating and the other person doesn't feel like they can say anything. Mm -hmm. And so I think some people, when some people say, oh yeah, we're, we've been collaborating and, 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 and it's very clear that um, their vision has never been in interrupted, then it's probably not a collaboration. And so just like any conversation where you say, here's what I have to say, your collaborator will say, okay, I've heard that, well, what about this? And, and that inevitably means that, you know, you sort of go back and forth. And of course, in the, in the case of um, the work that we did together, Michelle's expert here, and so I'm not going to go into the theater and say, well, based on my experience doing public <laughs> lectures, here's how the stage sh should work, right? So just like in a conversation, someone will take charge at some point, and you have to be patient and willing to give up power and um, have an ego that has space for somebody else. And if you don't, then the collaboration's not for you. You're just gonna be pushing someone to do what you want. I'd love to pick your, your brains for, for hours and hours. I feel like we could talk about this endlessly, but part of me feels like this is a great place to bring this to a point because so many of the things that you've been saying um, seem absolutely instrumental for folks who may be embarking on their own or continuing on their own um, collaborative journeys. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Thanks a lot, Megan. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. It's truly really been a pleasure you. talking to you. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> She's the best. True. <laughs> Thanks again um, for tuning in. Again, I'm Killian Quigley from the Sydney Environment Institute. We really appreciate your time and your attention. Take care. <laughs>